Hello everyone and welcome to Network Labs. Today in this video, I will show how to configure VPLS for multi-point service over a service provider network. For our requirements, ISP1's client is requesting a connectivity between their sites, Switch 1, Switch 2, and Switch 3. In this lab, we will simulate the different requirements for VPLS services using the different encapsulation types. IGP and MPLS LDP are already configured in this series, which are the main requirements for VPLS to work. Refer to the screen for the network details. Let us begin with task number one, which is interconnecting VLAN. Here, switch one is in access mode. While switch two and three are in trunk mode using VLAN 500. To achieve our tasks, follow the steps below. First, configure the interface facing the customer. Configure the attachment circuit by entering the service instance configuration mode. Let us begin in XE Router 1 facing Switch 1. Let us first check the MPLS forwarding and routing table. To begin, enter the interface facing switch 1. Input service instance, followed by an identifier which must be unique in this interface, then followed by Ethernet. Next, configure the encapsulation type. Here, it is untagged since the requirements should be access mode. Next, we need to add a new tag by using a VLAN rewrite push operation. Here, we add new ingress tag with the value of 500 and remove egress tag. Next, create a bridge domain to be linked on this interface. Enter bridge domain followed by an identifier. Next step, configure a Layer 2 virtual forwarding interface manually. Type L2VFI, followed by a name. Then Manual. Under the VFI configuration mode, input the VPN ID which must be the same on the PE neighbors. Then, configure the bridge domain to be linked on this interface.
Lastly, define the neighbor PE router. In our diagram, the neighbor routers of XE router 1 are XE router 2 and XE router 4. That's all for the configuration. Let us go to XE Router 2 facing Switch 2. In XE Router 2, the requirement is Trunk Mode. To achieve this, enter the interface facing Switch 2. Then, enter the Service Instance Configuration Mode. Configure the encapsulation mode, which is dot one q for trunking, followed by the VLAN ID. Then the bridge domain. Here, in trunk mode, no need to configure rewrite operation, which is the difference in the access mode configuration in XE Router 1. Next, configure Layer 2 VFI interface manually, which is the same process with the other PE routers. The neighbor PE routers of XE Router 2 are XE Router 1 and 4. Let us go back to XE Router 1 and include the loopback IP address of XE Router 4 under the VFI interface. Going back to XE Router 2, Add the loopback address of XE Router 4 under the VFI interface. The last router is XE Router 4, which is the same configuration with XE Router 2, since the requirement is also trunk mode. All the PE routers are done. Let us check the status of the VPLS in each router. Use the commands on the screen to verify. First, monitor the bridge domain. Here, we can see the status of the bridge domain, the VFI and interfaces attached to it, and learned MAC addresses. Next, 
Verify the VFI interface's status. Next command. Check the status of neighbor PE routers linked to the VC or VPN ID. Repeat the verification on the other PE routers before proceeding on the customer devices. All the PE routers are good. Next step, configure the required setup on customer side. In switch 1, the requirement is access mode. Configure VLAN 500. Then, untag the VLAN on the interface facing XE router 1. Then configure the IP address for interface VLAN 500. For now, ping to the other is not yet successful. Proceed to switch 2 and configure the required setup which is trunk mode. Configure VLAN 500 then tag to the interface facing XE router 2. Configure the IP address for interface VLAN 500. The same configuration in switch 3 facing XE router 4. In switch 1, let us conduct ping to switch 2 and 4. All the switches can now ping each other and can detect their MAC address.
the same status in the PE routers. All the MAC address of each switch associated with the bridge domain are detected. We are done with task 1, which is VLAN interconnection using the combination of trunk and access mode facing the customer. This setup is very useful in actual scenarios if the customer requires a trunk on one side and access mode on the other side and all their sites can reach each other. See the configuration scripts on the screen for this task. I have included both Cisco XE and its corresponding commands in Cisco XR routers. Both commands are working in production environment with hardware Cisco ASR900, ASR9000, and NCS series. I hope that this is informative to you and thank you for watching.